Back to whistling in the dark. I am Captain Logan. And I. Oh, sorry. What were you saying? You might be the. He might be the Jeff. I might be the Jeff. And today we are tackling the Giants' first flirtation with their obsession with American presidents. We are doing Lincoln. the second album, Lincoln. And presidents really is a big thing with them. They go to this all the time. Although this wasn't named after the president, Lincoln. Was it not? No, it was named after the town of Lincoln. Um, you know, that's 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 the thing I meant to mention last video. Uh, that, that I've never been to New York. I'm not, I wasn't I wasn't born. I'm not from New York. They have all this uh, uh, stuff in a lot of their songs and, and lyrics and videos and things uh, that are all about New York. And I and I and I've I, I wish I I wish more of that resonated with me because I've never been there. Yeah, and. And I think, but I think it's too significant that they do kind of bring with them this, you know, out in the state, small town, 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 kids from out there come to New York City. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's true. That's really different. And they, and they spend enough time in New York City to be New York City guys. But they come from somewhere else, and that sensibility hasn't left them. And that's a different, that's a different color. That's a really good point. Yeah, it's almost someone it, who just came out of that. It's almost like an immigrant thing. Yeah, and they they've been like you know fully accepted in that culture, and they and they love it there, and they got to pick where they went. Yeah, and anybody who does that becomes a person who's existed in two different cultural milieus, which means they have a leg up and an ability not to take any single cultural milieu for granted. Yeah, that, no, that's a really good point. It doesn't matter which two, country, city, English, German, it doesn't matter which two, you come from one place and go to another, you become a person who can see across more than one cultural landscape, and uh, that makes a person taller. It's sort of like how Giant even. <laughs> it's sort of like how uh, family isn't always just whoever you're related to. Yeah. Your blood relatives is like they they like landed on their home. They like they like chose their home and they stayed there not because they were they were always there so they can't like see the forest for the trees. They they like they they went there from somewhere else and loved it comparatively. I uh, like the way that learning a second language does so much to sharpen your appreciation and alertness to the first but they also didn't forget their roots yeah uh, I always forget that that Lincoln I'm bad a thousand today I always forget that Lincoln is not about the president because they do so many president things yeah later on and I also always forget where they were from originally even though Lincoln is called Lincoln because they're in New York all the time oh and the album art for the Lincoln album has this monument thing that stylistically Makes you, you think calls of the, to the mid nineteenth century. Yeah, it'll be about the right time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Could have been a Lincoln or a Tippy Canoe and Tyler Two kind of thing. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and just get into Lincoln uh, as we did in our last video. I saw one of their posters for the release of that album. Mm -hmm. The president, the man, the president, the town, the log, the album. <laughs> That's hilarious. So it's actually a catch-all. It's just yeah. all of those things. Um, but yeah, uh, let's go ahead and get into the album. So like last time, uh, if, you, if you didn't watch that video and for whatever reason you decided to start with Lincoln, uh, we're going to listen to, they should have been like the logs. Yeah. Um, we're going to listen to the entire album and chat about it, sort of like a commentary while we're listening. And of course, we can't actually put the music here on YouTube. So if you want to listen to the album along with us, uh, we're going to go straight through start to finish. And uh, the link to the album, to a place where you can listen to it, is in the uh, description. So feel free to click on that. Read the description, and, people. Uh, w w like we do with movies, we're Why doing. Do we our, have to keep telling. We're you? doing our level best to uh, provide context, but it is going to be much easier to listen to this conversation if you're if you also have the music in your headphones. So anyway, that's a theory. Uh, are you ready, sir? Are you ready? Here, here's yours. Actually, I didn't. I said, Are I gotta, you ready? I can get mine out. Give me a second here. I'm not even. I'm not even prepared for this. What am I doing? Uh, okay, so Lincoln, uh, and I forget the year on this. Was this just the very next year? Did they put this out right after the Pink Album? 
I want to say... Because I know their first three albums are, obvi- well, obviously, between 86 and 90. 87, maybe 88. But uh, that'd be worth looking up. Yeah. We'll leave that as an exercise to the reader. Yeah, I just don't have it right here, but I'll get it here in a second. Okay, let's just get right into Put it. the year this album was released once you found it in the comment section below. <laughs> thanks, thanks for that, The Jeff. Now we're going to end up with nothing but comments saying the date of Lincoln. All right, here we go. Everybody, please press play, starting with the first track. Make sure to have it to timestamp zero when you get into that video there in the description. Don't forget to turn the sound on. And yeah, you got to do that too, um, Jeff. If they're listening to this, if they can hear you saying that, the sound is on. Are you sure? <laughs> uh, everybody, uh, we're, we're going to start with Anna Ng, of course. Everybody, please press play right now. There we go. Uh, so Anna Ng, uh, we, we didn't talk. We didn't talk. Yeah, we didn't talk about videos much last time, and of course, we're going to get to these yes. at some point. Uh, but Anna Ng is uh, is another one that got a video, uh, and it's brilliant. I just want to throw that out real quick. Categorically love all of the early Giants videos. Mm -hmm. All of them. My apartment looks upside down from there. This, right away we're starting with uh, another lyrically brilliant song uh, that's really super catchy and uh, again does that, um, does a rhythmic thing that I feel like they like to bring back a whole lot. They've got a nice strong rhythmic hook that underlies everything. At least through the verse. And the verse says things that are not so strange, but in strange ways. Yeah. Uh, and is another thing that, that sounds deeply personal to them. This is like a yeah. thing only they could write that that, it, that is grabbing onto some of their personal history. And nostalgia is so important. Talking about the 64 World's Fair. Yeah. That's going to run through this whole album. Uh, little does this nasally thing that I yeah. I've always like because nobody else sounds like that and it's if you if you can't immediately tell because like New Giants listeners I think a lot of the time don't even realize there are two lead singers yeah because Flancy and Linnell are so good I, I mean like they're in the same they're in similar vocal ranges yeah they're, when they they're want both to they can tenor baritones come very close to passing for each other yeah the way you can tell the difference much of the time is when Linnell does that. Yeah, that one has a little bit more of the twang. Mm-hmm. And again, playing with expectations. He says sticks like like a broken yeah. record, so he's going to stick so like a broken it. record. Yeah, it's great. I love that, man, this moment in this verse. And the and, truth and, is, we don't know anything. Again, Welcome going to the to Giants, the, folks. Yeah, exactly. That's that's it. We're we're done. There's nothing else to say. I mean, I mean, it's again the really depressing lyrics to a really happy, fun, catchy song, yeah. and somehow or rather, when you think about those ideas, they don't seem so bad. No. When you listen to them within the context of a Giants, something matter of fact about them, right? and they find the humor in it. Yeah. You know, the truth is, yeah. we don't know anything. It's like, they, you're right. Matter of fact, they just they just make observations. And bleakness of philosophy doesn't have to be bleakness of mood. Yeah, that's great. It, it, it's it's almost like they they land on things that are just true, and there's nothing we can do yeah. about about it. So we might as well like bask in what's interesting and odd. And the glow and, of your majestic presence. Right, that too, of course. <laughs> um, fade out did not happen on any track in the first album. Yeah, you're right. I I wonder. I'm sure that's one of the one of those songs that was played a lot in college radio. I could picture it. And of course, that's where a lot of people found the Giants. We didn't really talk about that last time. Back when alternative really was alternative before it became mandatory. Um, like fun. Yeah. So Cowtown is uh, one of the songs that I always thought was fun, and I I liked the, the thing I like about it is how instrumentally. They find a way to kind of make guitars and things sound like house. Yeah. I really like that. This was a song that had a girl on Sarah. She didn't like this at all the first couple times she heard it. And I don't know why, but uh, it was it was never one of those that I thought was like in the top, the tippy top of the repertoire. Uh, but I just like this 
for its sounds more than anything. And, you know, uh, some of the lyrics are, are quite brilliant, too. I like the way that the verses have this color to them. Mm-hmm. With that weird clarinet ostinato that's odd metered, so it doesn't line up right with anything ever. Yeah. And then you get to these little breaks that are heavy grunge. And you just flip back to the going down to Cowtown. And you're back to screaming and <laughs> heavy distortion. Once again, perfect the fusion of, 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 of Linnell and Flancy. Yeah. Xylophone, yeah? Or yeah. You know, something reminiscent of one, I'm sure. And, and actually, like, I always thought of this as a Flansy song, but like the verses could have easily been yeah. written by Linnell, even though he, he, he doesn't have vocals there. Our only home is Bone. Yeah. I was wondering, Dang. there's so many like, like play on words with them, I was wondering if in Cowtown there's something to like Cowtowing you know? all, also. Well, I never thought of that. That's awesome. I don't know if there's anything in that, but... I never thought of that, and that is beautiful. <laughs> and that's right. <laughs> and and we don't know anything yeah. anyway, so... And that's the truth I is... Be. I'm gonna see the cow beneath the sea. Uh, it, it's super catchy. Yeah. A good sing-along song. Good for the car, if you drive alone. <laughs> <laughs> um, the harmonies or are nice. with other Giants fans, because it's got a great harmony part. You can add a third one if you're... You could, Especially you know, before. that's a thing with a lot of giant songs where I'm like, where I will think of another harmony bit you could have thrown in. Yeah. There, I mean, we may we may get to to them. There are a couple of songs where I have a really hard time not singing another harmony that I feel like ought to have been there. I don't know if you ever do that with things. Yeah. Especially because it's the two. It's still a duo. So there's room, and there's space. This is one of two songs, if memory serves, on Link. And I haven't actually listened to this album all the way through in a while. Uh, but individually, I go back to these tracks all the time. Uh, I listen to Giants and Shuffle a lot. But this is one of two songs that kind of goes to like a beatnik place yeah. on Lincoln. There's one place, that, there, there's one song this that we'll get to that is just straight up beatnik poetry. Yes. This is 1955. Lounge singing. Yeah. You're at a coffee house. And we were talking about this the last the last video. Somebody this cool. this has to be a live drummer. Yeah. Couldn't do this with a drum machine. Couldn't do this with samples. You could yeah. probably do this with samples now. But it'd be a lot easier to get a real drummer who understands the style. Okay, so this kind of crazy horn, break. This kind of crazy horn stuff. Yeah. This I think we are listening to the first place we get it because uh, when when I think Giants now I think like weird tuba stuff. And yeah. that's not a tuba, but like, but like, just just weird brass things. And I don't think there's hardly any brass at all in the first album. No, is there? Is they there haven't any? gotten big enough to hire. Well, yeah, but we know that we know that Flansy plays sax. Is it Flansy that plays sax? Oh no, I think that's Linnell. Or is it Linnell? Okay, Linnell plays accordion and sax. That's right. That's right. And clarinet, I think. And keyboards, obviously. And keyboards and things. Flans does everything that looks like or is shaped like a guitar. Yeah. And uh, and the parade drum. Yeah, I was gonna say probably a lot of that um and the of that stick. drum of that drum stuff. Yeah. Just anything percussive. Gosh, I love that song. Yep. And this one too. Um You know I can never figure out whether it's on the beat or off the beat until it's about <laughs> two measures in. Purple Dupay is another song that I feel like really easily could have been on that first album. There are yeah. there are bits, and uh, I don't want to be obnoxious about this, but th there there are certain songs that um, kind of help to shape the sound of this album, and then other ones where I'm like, you very easily could have put that on the last. And th that last song, like "Life's Still a Little Bot," I can't imagine that on the first album. Yeah, this they just weren't quite there yet. The Pink album flavor to it, but it works into the nostalgia thread of this whole album so beautifully. And I think of this as a companion piece to "Don't Let Start." Yeah, I could buy that. I love the rhythmic off kilterness. I think maybe some of that is just the tone of the guitar, just the yeah. color of the guitar. And uh, Chinese people were fighting in the dark, Jeff, and we we tried to help them fight, but nobody appreciated them. I don't know why, and that's got to be a reference yeah. to something somewhere. But that 
always cracked me up. I don't yeah. know why. We tried to help him fight, but nobody no, appreciated nobody, that. Nobody appreciated that. Once again, it's... Headlines of the day. The, the Giants are so, are so weird and almost cagey in that uh, they almost ask you not to listen to the lyrics at the same time as they're yeah. asking you to listen to the lyrics. Like, like, like people... I think, I think as many people love them for their, their lyrics as they do for their, their music, but I think sometimes those are separate yeah. people. And they, they make it perfectly easy to do either. Not to if you don't want to. Yeah. Um, would you? This is a can of worms. Yeah. Do you consider the Giants, on the whole, a comedic band? Um, I feel like that is the ten million dollar question with them. Boy, I don't know that. I suppose it depends on because I know that's a title that, they don't like. What that category wants to mean? I mean, if comedic band means merely comedic. Then I gotta say now. Yeah, they're not just novelty music. Yeah. They have as much to say about anything serious as anybody else, more perhaps, but they do have a much more alive sense of humor and sense of absurdity, and they work through that more than. I love that. More than, say, Marilyn Manson. Sure. <laughs> Who is not funny um, in any way. Part of the reason I like to ask that question... Well... Part of the reason I like to ask that question is because I, when, I, when I'm praising them, sometimes one of the praises that comes out is, that's hilarious. Yeah, which is fair. Yeah. Because they are good at that. But... It's hilarious because of its brilliance. It's not the other way around. Yeah, no, that's that's fair. And they have some songs that legitimately there's nothing funny about yeah. it. But I find those few and far between. I mean, there there, there is a uh, absurdity, I guess, is the right word. Yeah. And and I like like quirky too. But I hesitate using that because again, I know they don't like that label. But I'm sorry, like I'm describing what your what your music is. It it, it, it I don't have a better yeah. word than that. But they have songs. Give me a word you like that's. <laughs> more appropriate than that and I'll be happy to use it like I I listen to their stuff you know in the background all the time it's just music to me now um, some of that is just my natural sensibilities and the fact that I've listened to their stuff so much but um, but I feel like there are but I feel like there are a lot of songs like that one for instance that has a natural absurdity to it nobody else is going to make anything that sounds like that and then they have things like uh, they'll need a crane it's kind of just a song yeah. it's there's nothing weird about that song. Most of their songs are not jokes. Yeah. Most of them are not about being funny. Like, Another First Kiss, it's just a song. Like, There's nothing really naturally absurd about that. Some of them hit us in the way that funny things do. And that's why I say they're funny because they're brilliant, not the other way around. Uh, so here... This is a... So here is one of my favorite TBG yeah. songs um, of all time. Where, where your eyes don't go is absolutely genius. Um, so, because it, because it just it it makes you, again, it's so childlike in that it, yeah. it it's a it's a it's a concept that makes you think about things that everybody thought of when they were kids, and they're kind yeah. of they're kind of inviting you to go back to that place again. That adulthood is abandoned only because it chose to abandon them, not because it isn't a real concern. Yeah, absolutely. Those those things you can't see. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if you had ice by in the back Free of your head? To come and go. Or talk like Curtis Blow, but there's a pair of eyes in back of your head. Someone's in the kitchen with Dinah. Oh my God. <laughs> Boosh! <laughs> that is what that is. It's like the first time, and we'll talk about this when we get there, but it's like the first time I heard the song They Might Be Giants and realized that was Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. Like, I heard that song 150 times before I finally realized that that was Spider-Man. This song is another great one, too. At the end. The uh, th this, this is my favorite lyric in this in this song, just the, this, the scarecrow that's... Yeah. On Every jumbled face, pile of person. Your... What a beautiful yeah. image. Because... This always makes me think of the Perry Mason show. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then you get this, the Andy Griffith theme song. Is it kind of Andy Griffith? Andy Griffith is, uh... Ba -dum -ba -ba -dum -ba 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 -ba. Like, how is that Andy Griffith? 
I, I guess faintly it's in there, yeah. Huh. So it's Matlock. Okay, you're right. You put those two things together, you get Matlock, right? <laughs> and, and I just love how this runs away with itself at the end. Threw this, you know, throw that together. Okay. It works. I guess. Uh, that, that's a song that easily could have been shorter, and I'm glad they let it go on longer. Yeah. It's an example that they don't Early write... Early on, they had a really good knack for that. They can, they can write stuff that's longer and still awesome in their way. They just don't always choose to. Well, and they do the same thing Weird Al tends to, which is, if you're going to have the same verse or chorus two or three times, you're going to mix up the lyrics a little bit. Yeah. And that's something I've always appreciated about both of those acts. Give it a reason to happen again. Piece of dirt. Uh, a lot of this really... On this particular album, a lot of this really minimal uh, percussive stuff. Yeah. Where there's not a whole lot of, like, melodic stuff going on um, in, like, guitars or uh, keyboards yeah. or anything. It's driven a lot more by unconventional uh, percussion. Yeah. There again. There is a bass line going on in yeah. the accordion, but it's just, it's not bass, yeah. but it's, a, it's a, essentially your bass line. They're making a texture of their own. Yeah. And it's not made out of the ingredients that standard rock songs are made of, and that's okay. And each song does that in a different way. Okay, so, um, forgive me because I'm not a music guy, He's, and, and sometimes I can't I can't place instruments, but is that a clarinet when they that's go to a that... That's Barry Sax. That's a Barry Sax, okay. Yeah, there's a... A majority of the times... Sometimes they do brass and woodwind and stuff that I can't immediately figure out. A majority of the times you're hearing a Barry sax in a giant song. And again, that's the big thing this, this album brings yeah. in that we didn't get in the last album. I don't think at all. Yeah. Oh, it's in there. Is it? Bum, 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 Number three. Oh, you're right! Okay, all right. There you go. There it is. But I think the Barry sax is the one that Linnell plays the most and is the most fluid on. Okay. I, I love this. I love this bit. I find myself haunted by a spooky man named Smith. It's so weird. I wish that I could jump out of my skin. Uh, the Giants hey, a segue. have to be one of those bands that people like to play when they were on something. I could picture that. I would. I would imagine. I mean, like, they blow my mind all the time. Just imagine if you're high. Well, you don't have to be high, because this does that's, it for you. That's right. No, absolutely. Perfectly safe and uh, talk about free way to blow your mind. Talking about songs earlier that uh, I can't help but sing along with and I have to know all the words this to. This like is that way, but also, um, this, has, this has this great whistle part. Yeah. Yo, and yo, yo. I, I, I like to whistle a lot. And there are a couple of giant songs yeah. that are real whistly, like whistling in the dark. Well, it's not. Yeah. It's not. That's uh, that's that's part of the that's part of the joke. Except that like they're never too whistling in the dark isn't about whistling. You know that phrase means something else. But yeah, this coming on the heels of I wish that I could jump out of my skin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, we're starting to see them build threads between songs. Yeah, and we'll talk about that when we get into Miscellaneous T, which is not a studio album, but we'll tackle because yeah. it's got some major, major heavy hitters in it. Um, they, 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 start, they start to even bring back characters in songs. Yeah. Like the Hotel Detective. Right, and like, uh, and like Chess Piece Face and Rabbit Child. Um, so... Sad is a word sad. like no that we cannot get away from in giant songs. Yeah. Uh, sad, 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 sad. Why must I be sad? A great little monosyllable. Yeah. But again, they like to talk about depressing things. And, it's and a, so they, they go to the negative plate. No and sadness. And they use the simplest term in the language for it. They, absolutely. You don't hear the word sad in a lot of songs. But then there will be, uh, in that song, you'll have myriad other words uh, that reflect th how, yeah. how how large and verbose their vocabulary is. Yeah, you know it's not because they don't know bigger words. <laughs> they chose that one. Right. And it's more effective there. This is uh, one of Sarah's favorite songs. 
Yeah, mine too. The Pencil Rain. The Impossible Dream. Another song that, yeah, another song that's uh, really easy to read all kinds of things Same. in, but I just want to imagine that it's just exactly what it sounds like. Yeah. Uh, Team BG songs are so much fun when they're just literal. Yeah. And I, again, layers. Well, like, there's the all kinds of. always give that answer when asked. That's right. Almost always, yeah. What's this song about? Uh, exactly what well, it says on the tin. Uh, well, you see, there is a, there is a pencil yeah. and it's raining. Um, and whether they mean that or not is happily left to the viewer. Absolutely, yeah. And, and, we're, and we're not getting into a whole lot of the. Um, of the analysis that you'll find on like the TVG wiki and things like that, um, you, you can go find those things for yourself and ideas that people have had about what some of these songs mean. Um, there's there's probably some songs here and there that I, one of us will have a little bit of a read on that'll be fun to talk about. But we, we wanted to talk uh, more about um, just in general the the music. Some of those might even be right. Some of them might be right. Yeah, they might. He's one of the first songs taking their albums in a literal chronological way to have a straight up regular instrumental solo that actually is the tune. You notice that uh, the yeah, and, they, and they, you're right. They don't do a whole lot of that, but I just I just thought of this because I'd never noticed it before. You, you notice the other guitar um, during that solo is doing like a like like a breaking news. Yeah, thing. you got that telephone Morse code. Yeah. thing in the background. Give you that breaking news war movie feeling to it. They're gonna do it's something unusual powers. and envelope pushing. They're the not gonna parachute. just give you the melody in the. the and again, one of the things that is is real absurd about them is they like to affect weird voices. Yeah. But it works in the song. Like I don't, I don't think they a pencil rain. I'm not like laughing at it. No. It sounds like the character singing the song. Yeah. And it's a song that would be sung by a character who sounds like that. Yeah, it's a it's a weird heightened you know cartoony or comic book kind of universe. And it's how I always imagine or the Giants. Broadway or even operatic. sure, sure. I just mean in general. Yeah, that particular song. Yes. And here's a staple. Yeah. Uh, World's Address is one of those Giant songs. They do this a lot, where they with like a double entendre line or title. Yeah. No need to confess. Is it that the world is address, or is it the uh, location of the world, the address of the world? And it's spelled that way. Uh, A place that's <clears> worn. <throat> it's, it's hysterical. Uh, I, I mentioned earlier that there are places where, just for me, Team EG and the tit converge a little bit. Yeah. Uh, this this is one of those. Uh, the the the, um, the kind of... The kind of jazzy feel of this of this song is yeah. exactly the tick score for me. Got the tango beat to it. Yeah, thank you. Men of science. It's Look like it's, it's like kind of like a Copacabana kind of thing. Yeah. Albert Einstein and Copernicus were wrong. And so that line like comes out and says it's it's about the world being a dress, yeah. but again the title of the song is A D D R E E S S. Right. I also um, dig on the Joshua Fried remix, which we'll yes. get to when we get to Miscellaneous Tea. Uh, more, you know, another straightforward uh, guitar solo here. Yeah. That's just doing the melody of the song. It's it's uh, it's short and slight. Yep. But they're doing some somewhat more straightforward things all of a sudden. Well, it's hard to keep thinking of really weird things to do. That's for sure. But this is another one of the songs yeah. that's just really catchy and fun to sing along to uh, and has a hysterical and kind of brilliant yeah. premise. And good strong hook, nice characteristic groove, lyrics that you can follow. Yeah. But it's a bombastic, yeah. you know, out there idea that's uh, real silly and cosmic and very Douglas Adams, really. Yeah. It's a song to help you not to panic. I also have always liked this placement right after that because it's such a oh, different yeah. thing and it slows everything down and it's real lullaby-ish. 
Um, I lost my mind the first time I heard this song. Take, Take off, off that, that stupid looking hat you, you wear. wear. Oh. <laughs> um, the Giants write the best breakup songs in a very <laughs> I, I never thought of this as a breakup song. I guess it is. I'm going to die if you're, you touch me one more yeah, time. Yeah, you're embracing my collapse, yeah. You think that I want to be understood, but I don't agree with that. I uh, Early on, I would get so lost in uh, just just in, an idea in a line that I couldn't see the forest for the trees. And then later on, uh, I have this almost like, I don't know, group think kind of thing where I just sing these songs so much I don't even think about what they mean anymore. <laughs> Uh, it would be so easy to brainwash people with this kind of music. Some of them fairly do transcend meaning. And I always wonder if that's part of the reason that they wrote a song called Subliminal, because it's so easy. It, they're like, they're, they obviously are kind of uh, you know into that idea you a little bit. to do that, this is how. This is how, Here's yeah. your textbook. Future dictators and <laughs> scumbags of the universe. Yeah, I mean, just be... And, and, they, and they, kind of, they kind of make fun of propaganda and stuff, too. You'd have to. The smell of love is everywhere. Yeah. You think it's always sensitive and good. You think, you think that, that I, I want to be, be understood. understood. And I love that. I love that line in their second album. Yeah. I don't know if they're actually meaning that in a broader sense, but uh, we don't care. We're writing what we want to write. Like, I love That's that. That's why they refuse to tell anybody what their songs mean. Yeah. Other than uh, pointing them to the obvious surface. The Giants are really some unsung heroes in, in that 80s counterculture movement. I think so. I couldn't say them another thing like them. And that's okay. Yeah, and that's and that's the point. And that's and that's why it's unarguable that they're that they're, you know, counterculture. Yeah. They're so individual and And what's funny is even now they are. Like there's yeah. so many things that like I, yeah, I, I, I think all I the stuff we've heard since nineteen eighty seven. I love REM, but there's a lot of stuff that sounds like that now. And the Giants don't have that. There's nothing else then or now. That, I mean, I mean, I mean, they have inspired some things. That, you know, you think of Jonathan Colton, but he's not doing Giants. He's learned from them, and you can tell. And Absolutely appreciate that. But I find that there are a lot of people that like one or the other, but not both. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Colton's melodies. I like his uh, lyric, lyric writing more than I like his musical writing. I'll buy that. So what do you think of Santa's Beard? Because this this might be the weak link of the, of the album. It's certainly a disturbing song of the album. <laughs> <laughs> I saw my baby wearing Santa's beard. <laughs> she kissed him once. And I just love this. Ear. I just love this hilarious notion of a love triangle with Santa yeah. Claus. And. I, my read on this has always been it's not actually Santa, it's a mall Santa. Yeah, that's what She's wearing his beard, you know, he comes off. Exactly. She's always had this twisted side. Yeah, I like the idea that that's, that's a weird fetish that yeah. your girlfriend has that you try to ignore, but you can't ignore and it anymore. I don't like that fat guy around. I don't around. like that fat guy around. <laughs> it's a really funny song. Yeah. And a really disturbing song. <laughs> Um, it's just, it's a little bit more on the nose than some other things Thrilling on these Christmas albums. several each year. <laughs> um, and that's why I say it's maybe the weak link of the album, but I still like it a lot. Again, it doesn't yeah. go on too long. Um, several each year. Flans, you know, you mentioned per punk earlier. I don't know what I'm saying. You mentioned punk yeah. earlier. He's flirting with that a little bit here. Yeah. And Hodel Detective, too. Yeah, that I can that I can hear cousins of the Ramones in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he just likes to go to those really harsh vocal places that yeah. Okay, here's that beat and poetry song. This is just beat and poetry. Yeah. That's like all it says. Except Lie Still has an authentic kind of jazz sound. Yeah. This is kind of beatnik jazz, but transmutilated by screamatronic <laughs> grunge punk noise. We need to get some of these words you're making up you're making up on a yeah. t-shirt, you know, like I think so. Screamatronic, man. 
Transmutilated. Transmutilated Screamatronic, man! And I bought the right one just for you! But if you took these lyrics and you took all the Screamatronic yeah. uh, madness out of it, you could just go to a poetry yeah. slam with it. Very easily. And they're heartbreaking. Yeah. This is an incredibly dark and serious song. But it's got this out there. But when I first heard it, I had a hard time reading any of that in it because I thought it was so weird. Yeah, that's because your money what talks, but my, but my genius, genius walks. walks. You will miss me. Genius walks. So you will miss. Me. And this is another thing where it, where it's I obviously. First of all, this is not a rock song. No. Uh, and so it's not just a, you know, 4-4 four, four time all the way through. Thing. Like, it keeps interrupting itself. Yeah. It slows down, it speeds up. And golly, what an image. It must be raining because a man ain't supposed to cry. But I, I look up, up and I don't see a cloud. Man. Yeah, so depressing. You know, with other music, that might have been a really serious song. Yeah, that's a good point. But also, uh, it might not fit on an album like this. It might be harder. Yeah, it would be somebody to, else's. Yeah, because like it, it just it would hurt your feelings too much. Yeah. But like when you really sit and think about it, wow, that's a really Raw. Th that, and I guess once again, I'm using this word too much. That's a brilliant image. Yeah. And then followed up by a little sad breaking up song. Yeah, which again is just a song. I mean, I don't think there's anything goofball. About yeah. this, uh, it's. I mean, I mean, like it's. It's an unconventional metaphor, yeah. but it sounds almost as sad as it is, and that's unusual for them. Like yeah, this yeah. kind of sounds like Linnell just like yeah. like uh, uh, breaking down to me. You get the occasional Linnell twist, but it's not off the wall. And like it's catchy, it's got a hook, but and maybe it's just I, I've listened to the lyrics, but. Mm -hmm. I don't know, and maybe also it's the music video, but there is something about just the the general flavor of even the music of this song that it, it sounds sad to me. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got a melancholy to it. And Linnell's kind of twang is, I think, a part of that. And he can make things sound pretty melancholy. Yeah, but like he could accidentally turn this real silly with yeah. with that nasal thing. Yeah. Flans can deliver something. I love real quick. I'm sorry. I, this this bridge. I love the sense of urgency yeah. in it. It's real driving. And so the, all, again, it's how he jumps across the bar where the other nightmare people like to go. Across. Baby, wait! I didn't, I didn't mean, mean to, to say, say nightmare. nightmare. Ah, yeah. Where Flans can deliver this towering, screamy passion. Little has this sort of weariness. Yeah. That uh, makes a song like this, you know, pull the other string. Yeah, it always feels like... You'll, you'll get this, like, raw passion with with Flansy and, and with Linnell. Like you said, world weariness is a good way to yeah. put it. Where It just feels like he's been through some stuff. Yeah. Don't call me at work again. The boss still hates me. You know, I... That's a beautiful Just want to see a world apart from pain. Like... Yeah, it just it gets you right in the feels. <laughs> yep. Don't need a crane. There's only one thing you can answer that with. <laughs> I forgot that was <laughs> that. I love shoehorn with teeth so much. Okay, so the ding. You knew I was going to talk about yeah. this. The ding is one of my favorite things in all of giant the giant yeah. songs because they once again mess with your with your expectations. They screw around with when you think the ding is going to yeah. happen, and uh, and you know they, there's another song where they do that with a gunshot where there's like there's a gunshot and then they say gunshot but then it's not a gunshot. Yeah. Uh, but here. Um, I, like when I finally figured out where the dings happen, I was like, "That's just genius!" Like there won't yeah. be one here, or maybe, maybe that is where the one. I I've been talking, about it, so I forgot. Where, I lost where we were in the song. Um, but but like sometimes we go straight through it, and then in other places you you stop and there should be one, but there's not one. Yep. Ah, I love that. And I don't know, shoehorn with teeth is hilarious because. Yeah. It's just such is, a weird no thing, such thing to sing about. And there, it's true, there is no such thing. Ah. 
That is a masterpiece, Jeff. Yeah. I love Jorah with teeth. It's so weird. And it just makes me so happy. And it has its companion, too. In what? What do you think? I like Oh, okay, okay, sure. I thought I thought you meant, uh, like, so there's another sort you'll of... You'll miss me, and they'll need a crane. Our companions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoehorn and Stand on Your Own Head are just yin-yang twins. I think they're better with song order in this, in, 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 yeah. in this one, over this, Pink Album. You can see that they've put some thought into it. And I, I love it when bands actually think about the, the, the thing as a piece and almost like chapters of, of a, 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 a musical narrative, if nothing yeah. else, and, and maybe thematically in the lyrics a little bit. Where does this lead to? What comes after this? Mm -hmm. What does this come out of? Uh, stand on your own head for a change. Give me some skin to call my own. Like, that just immediately conjures a really bizarre image. Yeah. Stand on your own head. You ever stood on somebody else's head? Till they stepped on my head and they told me I was fat. Yeah. That's another lyrical cross -link. And again, like, like thematically, you can, you can see uh, how those things are connected together and uh, what's, what's kind of being talked about there. In individuality, leave me alone, let me go my own way. As compared to nostalgia... Avalanche or Roadblock. Roadblock. For whatever reason, this is one of the songs I immediately think of when I think of this album. Huh. I don't know why. But there are a couple songs, like I said earlier, that I can never remember if they're this or, or Pink Album. I, I, I never have that problem with Snowball and Hell. Uh, if, if, I, if I didn't have Disappointment, I wouldn't have any appointment. Yeah. Oh, I always love that line. It's so... This is a sadder album than the last one. Yeah. And and you know what I think it is? I think I think Pink Album goes to some, like, big, broad, like... And it's weird that this is the album with World's Address when I say this, but Pink yeah. Album has these, like, big, like, like kind of larger sad concepts, like, we're all doomed, we don't understand yeah. things. And this has a little bit of that, but more of it is personal. Yeah. More, is more of it concrete. is down to earth. Yeah. And that's a different emotional color. Yeah. More of it is like, my life oh, sucks. I get it. Uh, daily grind. Yet another thing yeah. where this and the tick converge a lot to me yeah. is the, mon the, 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 the... Back on that old time is money kick. Not back on it, Joe. Still on it. Still on it. Uh, not, like, like the Giants like to go to those mundanity of life yeah. places. Uh, and then we have this really hilarious play on words at the end. Money I owe, money I a. Uh, it's great. There's that folk thing coming back too. Yeah. Do so many brilliant things with that. Uh, it's amazing all the things that they can say in a song while also just messing around. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, they'll land on something clever and they never, um, like, lo lose an opportunity. Yeah. They're like, once you think of money I owe, money I a, oh, that's going in your song. Yeah. Like, you have to use that. And they'll, and they'll go, and they'll do it, and they'll move on. So this is another song that I had to learn all the lyrics to and that I can't stop seeing all the time. Um, I, I love this song so much. It took me a while to get used to the idea of this as an album closer. Yeah, that's that's fair. Uh, but I like it with the strings at the okay, end. Yeah. And that's the big thing for me. And and again, it's it has the opposite kind of problem album because than rhythm section one has. Well, and, and it and it has the opposite problem where you're used to hearing this in the middle of an album when we get to miscellaneous D. Right. Which will be the one place where we're, we'll hear some of the same songs again. Off the same ones that I tortured. A lot of a lot of my love for this song is about the harmonies. Yeah. Uh, and something about they do this a few times. I, I think the Giants are really fun uh, when they write songs about protagonists that are really obsessed with themselves. Yeah. They're like, 
full of himself because it always sounds like an unreliable narrator to me. You it, love it, it, me, and, and I love me. me. Like it never, it never sounds to me like the speaker really is like the greatest person alive. Where everybody worships the ground they walk on. They always sound in denial to yeah. me. And some of them, like this one, are just outright evil. Yeah, and psychopathic and and pretty and pleased with themselves about it. Yeah. Uh, and I, like like at this time, I would say it was probably risky to go to that uh, that religious place yeah. this goes to. Probably was. Um, I I kind of like they had the guts to do that. I doubt that their fan base was one to which that would have been a major issue. But. No, certainly not. But anybody that just found them, yeah. But that's not. If you just found them, that's probably not the song you found first. No, certainly not. But if you're just listening yeah. to it, to it, to an album, um, but no, fair enough. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think I think I always like that song just because of the the um, the audacity of it, and then just the just it's a really good melody. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun to sing. Melodically like, strong. It's harmonically interesting. I want to. I, I always wanted to get like a barbershop quartet together to yeah, do that song. I can picture a barbershop arrangement of that. And it's the irony of 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 like. Again, how like fun and bouncy this is, and what you're singing about is yeah. horrifying. I destroyed the bond of friendship and respect between the only people left who would even who would look, even me, look in me, me in the eye, and he's just fine with that. Oh, oh, I love that. This is coming from a massive Lex Luthor fan. Oh, I love that yeah, kind of this stuff. Is a total supervillain song. It is. Yeah, it's it's like the. It's like the Lex Luthor Credo or something. Um, okay, so... And you're closing on that note. Yeah, so see you later, folks. No, um, your best song on Lincoln. Golly. Is this as hard as the last one? Yeah. <laughs> are, um, you, are you going to cheat and not land on one again? Yes, I am. <laughs> um, where your this eyes, is harder for me, actually, yeah. than the first where one. Where Your Eyes Don't Go uh -huh. is certainly one of the candidates. Yeah, me too. Um... Always liked Mr. Me for totally different reasons. Oh, yeah, we didn't even really talk about that song. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a fun song. It is, it's yeah. It's just a lot of fun, despite being about being sad. Um, and it's one of the... They have a few songs that sound almost like uh, Sea Shanties, and that yeah. one kind of has that. And, uh... Man, yeah, something like Purple Toupee or The World's Address... Just outstanding. I don't think I like Purple Toupee quite as well as you do. I think just because, again, I th when I think of it, I think of Don't Let Start, and I like Don't Let Start more. Fair enough. Um, I don't know. I th For me, it's a massive tie between Where Your Eyes Don't Go and They'll Need a Crane, and I have a really hard oh, time yeah, that. not picking Crane just on principle. Like, I think that is maybe one of the most beautiful things Linnell ever wrote. And... Crane is so tightly and well structured. Yeah, it is a complete whole. It belongs to itself. It's it's put together in a perfectly serious way, and he's just bragging when he writes that song. Shows there's craftsmanship there. So yeah, that's probably the one I have to land on. With with Weary Eyes Don't Go as a close close second. Do you do you have a, a, a least favorite on this album? Um, and would you agree this is maybe a tighter album? than Pink Album. I, it, I find more cohesion across the album in this one than on Pink, which makes perfect sense. It doesn't have that bit that, that I felt like the Pink Album had where it kind of laid there for a second. Why oh, still little bottle? Yeah. yeah. I've Got a Match in the relative sense is probably the low point in this album for me. You think so? I'm going to go with Santa's Beard, but I think, but I love it. <laughs> Santa's Beard has the creepy factor to it. <laughs> but also, it's not as musically sophisticated yeah. as anything else on the album. That is certainly that is certainly true. I'll buy that. Um, so, concert song. Um, that has... Man, uh, Either Anna Ng or World's Address, probably. Anna Ng, they open. Uh, That's a strong. They open with song. a lot, and yeah, it's it's they'll either open with it or it'll be like the the one they'll bring they'll they'll come back with when they when they pretend like they've left the stage. It's, it, 
it's a straight up rocker. It does everything our good rocker needs. And, and and they can play that more full than it is in the album. Like I can I could see like I don't have this, but I could see someone saying they like that in concert in a way they don't on the album. It's it's just, it's a really it's a really good live kind of kind of track. I could see how that would be. Again, I'm not I don't be able have to have that, that feeling, but, but since I know the album version of it far too well for that, but yeah, old friend. So I'm gonna I'm gonna land on that one. I'll buy that. Uh, so anyway, any any final words? Anything else you want to say about the Lincoln as a whole? We can see how much that the how much these guys are thinking about what they're doing. That their art is a thoughtful art, and it's full of this off the wall crazy. That is why we like them, and it is completely independent of any sense of obligation to be a rock band the way rock bands are supposed to be rock bands yeah but and and there's plenty of fun and there's plenty of pure hedonism in it but it is a it, it also has this layer of thoughtfulness that uh, is more apparent in Lincoln than it is in the Pink Album yeah, the pink. Although it, I contend that it is there as well. Yeah, it it definitely is, but it's almost it's almost hidden or couched in the um in the wacky. Yeah, they're and more coy about it. I think the reason you you pick up on more of it in the uh, in the fuller more like rock tracks or bouncy tracks is because of those jazz tracks, yeah. and 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 those are and and those are all, I think all of those more jazzy tracks. Uh, and 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 the the tracks that I said are, are kind of driven by the percussion before anything um, are really like introspective pieces, and so then you pick up on the introspective yeah. on the introspection that's in those the, those those other tracks that are more bombastic. Well, that's fair. And they never do that again. Like wow. like 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 those those like they get really jazzy, but those those kinds of really intimate smaller. Uh, we're only working with like three or four instruments. I don't think they ever really do that again. Yeah. No, they just... flirt with it on Apollo eighteen a little bit, but it's it's not. But it's not like this. Yeah. Well, I think there's a moment or two of this in Flood as well. But... Yeah. Sure. But this is this is the last of their albums where there's major doses of this really tightly, finely sculpted means for producing a song. And having just looked at these uh, again, it'll be fascinating going to Flood because in a lot of ways it also is doing a lot of what these two are, but then there are bits of it that have a more full sound and you can kind of see them on their way to what they'll become. Yeah, so they, they're, I mean, it's they're a growing in a direction. Album, yeah. Most certainly, which is interesting because it's, their, it's, it's their most beloved album. It's actually not technically my favorite, but it's their most beloved album, yeah. I believe it. Um, I, I forget. I guess. I guess we should talk about this when we get there. But I forget if you and I are um, are in tune with our favorite albums. I feel like. I feel like you and I always had the had had, had the, the the same favorite. Could be. But we might want to wait on it. Let's wait on that. Okay. Uh, folks, thanks a lot for watching. We should appreciate it. Uh, leave your comments and. Uh, and the year that this album was produced. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I decided not to look it up because I just thought that was hilarious, and I was like, "No, we'll just be ignorant." I really thought it it's was the, the very internet. next. Someone will. I really thought it was eighty-seven. I really thought it was the next year, but it might be eighty-eight. I'm not sure. But like that would mean it would have taken them three years to get flood out, and I don't think that's the case. Yeah, that might be eighty-eight. Well, but you know what? We got miscellaneous tea in there too. Or well, is that right after flood? Is after flood. Is, is it so. okay? Okay. Uh, anyway, thanks again, folks, and we will see you again next time. I am Captain Logan, and I might be the Jeff. See you later, folks.